Hi, everyone. Join in. I'm just getting set up here. Today, I am making these bean-free burgers, and I know you're going to love them. They're from Drina's Kind Kitchen. And here's the photo. I'm going to try to pull this off in 15 minutes. Let's see if we can do it, okay? <laughs> Let's see if we can make this happen today. So I created this burger, Bistro Burgers, for Drina's Kind Kitchen. And guys, if you haven't got a copy of Drina's Kind Kitchen, it's at a really good price right now on Amazon. So maybe go link through. I do have the link below and see because it's at a nice price right now on Amazon. Uh, these Bistro Burgers, I created them for a couple of reasons. One, because, you know, you can never have enough burger recipes, but also because they're so easy. And I think people think that vegan burgers take time and have a lot of steps. No, they don't have to. And this one is bean free because most vegan burgers have beans in them, which I love beans, but sometimes people need um, dietary excuse me, things that are being free, they maybe aren't digesting lagoons very well for a period of time, or just to vary things up, right? I know I do hear from people that are looking for vegan recipes that don't have lagoons sometimes. Here's your recipe right here. So we're going to get started with these right away. Let me know what you're doing today and be sure to like the video. Thank you for the heart um, that just went through. <laughs> be sure to like and if you're on YouTube, definitely subscribe to my channel. Um, so we're starting with a lot of flavor building ingredients in these burgers. The first time that I made burgers and the first number of recipes that I made, I did a lot of steps. So I'd like saute mushrooms and onions or saute onions and bell peppers. It's great for flavor building, but it does take more time, right? And sometimes we just want to get it in the food processor and get it done. So that's what we're doing today. But we have a lot of flavor builders in the recipe so that we don't have those extra steps. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get the camera on the food processor here. And this is a Brazil. I often have people ask me which food processor I use. Um, I'm not, you know, affiliated um, with any particular brand of food processors. I do like the Brazil for the reason that it's um, a 16 cup, it's large, right? So this one, you can do this batch of veggie burgers. You can often double veggie burgers in a big food processor like this. And it is a BPA free bowl, which is nice too, but I think most of them are now. So um, we're gonna get started with the ingredients. So we are starting with dehydrated onion flakes. Now I've shown these to you guys before. These are super available everywhere. It's basically dehydrated onion. You'll find them in the spice aisle of any grocery store. I did link to Amazon if you wanna see what they look like and pick some up. I think I linked to an organic brand because sometimes people want organic, but these are not when you get them local, you know, in your grocery store, usually they're not. But they have a lot of flavor. And the other thing that they do, and there's something else in there, or is that just onion? Uh, <laughs> I have to think. No, that was just onion powder and nutritional yeast. The other thing that the onions do is they absorb flavor or absorb, not flavor. You don't want them absorbing the flavor. They absorb the moisture. So when you're working with wet ingredients in the burgers, you want the burgers to bind and hold together. And the onions help absorb some of that moisture. So it's really handy rather than using onion that is fresh and is going to add moisture. And then we have some chopped red bell pepper. Now, if you really don't like red bell pepper or you can't eat it for some reason, I think carrot would sub really nicely here. You could sub raw carrot or zucchini. Red bell pepper has a, you know, it has a nice flavor and also adds really nice color. Um, and I just did a quick video. I was chopping away. This is a new cutting board that I have that I'm loving. It's got, um, you know, a little groove to catch juices. You can hang it. It's made with sustainable materials. Uh, it's by Eli Home. So I put the link there if you want to look into this one. I had one like sort of like this for many years and had a hard time finding them online because they don't, this particular type of cutting board, it's made with like a 
pine fiber. It doesn't hold odors. And that's what I really love about it. I mean, it's handy. You can pop it in the dishwasher, but it won't hold odor. So you know what it's like if you're chopping, say, garlic, and then you pull out your cutting board from the dishwasher, you can still smell it on the board. Sometimes that happens, like with bamboo or other boards. This one does not, just like my old one. So just sharing that with you, and I will have another video on that later. Um, spices. We've got dried rosemary. I put everything together here. Dried rosemary, smoked paprika, uh huh, adds so much flavor. Um, if you've only used regular paprika, it's time to step it up. Get yourself some smoked paprika. Tastes amazing. Adds like a little smokiness without heat. Just is lots of flavor. And what else is in here? Cumin seed. You can use dill seed or cumin seed. And why was I going to get some? I feel like I was going to reach for something over there. Oh, I was sun-dried tomatoes. So I'll just show you before I drain them. These are sun-dried tomatoes that were, you know, dried and not soaked in oil. So they're, sometimes they're very tough and dry. And these ones were a little bit on that side, tough and dry. So I just soaked them in boiled water and you can see they soften up. They also have a really nice liquid that if you wanted to reserve that and use it in like a salad dressing, or hummus or a soup or something, it's gonna have some flavor because you can see it's got all that color um, and juices from the tomatoes. But I'm just using the sun-dried tomatoes because I don't want all that water in the burgers. So I'm just adding those and um, just looking around. Oh, and the next thing is red wine vinegar. I'll read the measurements after for you. Red wine vinegar, a little bit of tahini, a little bit of mustard, and miso. And so, guys, I'm finally able to use mustard. <laughs> there was a long time I did food testing, like, over a year ago. And mustard was on the list of things I couldn't use that, would like, made me feel kind of inflamed. And it's clear, so that's kind of fun. But there's some other things that haven't, which I will elaborate on maybe in a moment. But I wanna to try to get this recipe going for you. So we're gonna get this moving first. Here we go. So in there so that adds quite a lot of saltiness and the sun-dried tomatoes have like a, that salty umami flavor too so you don't need too much so this is kind of the flavor base and now we're adding like the bulk what helps make it a veggie burger right bringing it all together and what we have for that is pumpkin seeds so i'm going to throw the pumpkin seeds in there i chose to make these ones without nuts because again for food allergies i'm always thinking of people who need to have things like soy free or nut free or bean free. So these are also nut free, but you could sub in a nut if you want it, like walnuts. I love pumpkin seeds though. I think they're fabulous and totally undervalued in the vegan world completely. They're full of protein, zinc, all kinds of minerals and vitamins, and they taste good too, to boot. They're wonderful. So use them, eat them. They're delicious, fabulous. And we're adding some, what I say is sticky rice. So it doesn't have to be sticky rice, labeled sticky rice, just like a short grain rice. And I always batch cook rice. I have some in the fridge now. So I cooked it up like two nights ago and I had quite a lot left in the fridge. And now, so I already have it for the recipe and this is where you save time, right? So I have two cups. I just took it out of the container in the fridge. And as you can see, like it has some stickiness when I sort of press it together slightly. So not, a, I mean, you could use a long grain rice, it's perfectly fine, but when you use a sticky rice, like short grain rice, or even jasmine rice, it's already kind of sticky and will help hold together. And we're just gonna pulse that in. Um, there's something else I need to add. Oh yes, um, oats. And the recipe also calls for corn, a cup of corn. Here's the thing, corn is another like no-no for me right now. 
you know another one that's not working for me right now is sunflower seeds and i'm really pissed off about that because i don't really eat sunflower seeds a lot but you look at products that you buy sunflower lecithin is in so much like from granola bars to chocolate to um like yogurts so many things um and sunflower oil in small small amounts is in a lot of things like ice cream and um, again, uh, granola bars, things like that. It's everywhere. So it makes you really aware of like those added ingredients in food. Um, but when I see it in my chocolate, <laughs> this is why I buy like nibble chocolate um, or the Taza, which I mentioned the other day because there's no oil added and you skip that. Okay, or less of them. So what I'm adding today, that was a very long story to say that I'm not adding corn. I had some leftover butternut squash, those little like fries sort of that you buy. You know, you buy the crinkle cut fries sometimes in the store. So I bought them at, was it at Trader Joe's? Yes, because I got down to the States this week. I think it was Trader Joe's. I'm just looking at my time. Oh, I'm already at 11 minutes. And I bought some of those and I baked them up the other night with some seasoning. So all I did was kind of chop them up almost like corn. And that's what I'm going to add in just a minute. But I'm going to pulse through the rice and pumpkin seeds. Yes, first. All right, here we go. I need a spatula to scrape all that down. These are so flavorful. I. I think you will really, really love them. And that's why I'm featuring them today because there's a lot of recipes in the book that I haven't even talked about. And these are one of them. So the more you pulse it or process it, the stickier the you know mixture gets. So I don't want to over process. And now I'm going to pulse in the butternut squash, AKA pretending it's corn. And uh, we need some rolled oats. So you almost always find rolled oats in veggie burger recipes because they bind, they help bind, and they help absorb, absorb moisture. So when you, uh, I'm just hacking away at this bag. I know, I know. When you, this is where I'm going to lose my full 15 minutes of the video is with this. <laughs> Uh, when you add like liquids or wet ingredients to veggie burners like vinegar, which is nice to add because it adds flavor, a little bit of acid, a little bit of pop. Um, and you add wet ingredients like red bell peppers or even beans, that kind of thing. The rolled oats then when you add them, it helps bind and it helps absorb, absorb the moisture and it helps bring the burgers together. Okay, so we're adding, I think it's a half cup. And I'm just going to rough measure it. And I just pulse the oats in because I don't want to have them fully like processed. When I make burgers, I like to see the oats a little bit, like pulse them in. So I'm going to do that with the butternut squash to just kind of pulse, pulse, get it through. Oh, look, it looks like corn. <laughs> But, you know, encouraging you to think of one vegetable and if you aren't able to use it for one reason, then maybe just kind of think outside the box. What else could you use? So if I didn't have the butternut squash on hand, I might have just subbed in. Um, actually, I have some leftover white potatoes in the fridge, so I probably would have subbed in some of those. Like just I'm going to get my fry pan on now so I can fry one for you. Um, chop those up into little pieces and throw those in and then you've got a nice option, right? Also, sunflower seeds are in a lot of breads, like a lot of whole grain breads. Even when you don't see the seed, they're in there. I'm not pleased, but if it was my chocolate that I was not able to eat, I'd be an angry, angry woman. <laughs> Seriously, I would not be happy if it looked, if I got that food test back and it showed cocoa beans with like the red face, mm -hmm. angry face, don't eat it. I would be angry. Like, seriously, don't take it from me. So I'm all okay with cocoa. And I was just listening to a, an interview yesterday through the Fruit, Food Revolution Network um, with, you know, John Robbins, Ocean Robbins, and talking about how beneficial cocoa is and that chocolate is really healthy when it's 
the right chocolate, not the Kit Kat chocolate, but dark chocolate, not the chocolate filled with sugar and dairy, dark chocolate. And the darker, the better, right? So I mentioned that Taza chocolate the other day. That was 95%. I love that. All right, I'm talking away. I'm at minute oh, 15. Okay, I'm going to try to form one and get it get it in the pan. See some questions come through. I'm just going to quickly look. Hi, Karen from Texas. Hi, uh, Fraza. I'm, I'm really not reading that well. Fraza, well, I'm just reading. Thank you. Uh, nice to have you back. Saying that hasn't been here for a while. I am doing well. Thank you. I'm feeling well, doing well. And that's a good thing, right? Just to be, despite all the little food persnickety things, I'm doing well. Thank you. And I hope you are too. Peas would work, Esther. That would be a great option. Um, although they are a legume, so technically I wouldn't put them in this burger recipe. Also, peas are out for me. There's seriously only a few things, but they show up in a lot of foods. That's the problem. Corn shows up in a lot of things if you're eating anything processed. Um, I don't eat too much processed foods and I can avoid corn pretty easily. Um, but like corn chips or polenta, which I really love, which I'm going to make polenta fries with these tonight. I just won't have them. And uh, yeah, there, it's just a few things that show up in a lot of a lot of items. Um, you know what? I don't know your name. I'm just seeing Facebook user. Can't wait to try these. Love this uh, satay, satay. Sorry, I'll speak properly. <sighs> Chickpea satay with the uh, zucchini fritters. I'm glad you like that. I was going to demo that recipe, the chickpea um, satay with the um, pureed veggies in the sauce. I was going to do that one, but then I opted for the burger. So here we are. I'm just going to get this on the pan and really, so you can free form them. You can see that's what I have done. And when I form the rest of these burgers now, Um, I'm going to use an ice cream scoop. That's what I do all the time. So I'll just show you. I'm just going to let this one cook up, flip it and show it to you. It will need a little more cooking, but I want to get it off the pan so I can show you. So usually I use my ice cream scoop like so, and then form. Sometimes I fill it up a bit more, like get a nice full, full, full ice cream scoop and then pop it on a, either if you want to bake them on a, baking sheet lined with parchment, just pop it on like so, and then flatten it out and you have a burger, easy. You don't need any mold or anything like that to put it in so fast. I do like pan frying them because I like to get that sear, okay? But you can bake them at say 400 for about eight to 10 minutes each side, you know, eight minutes one side, then flip her over, done. So that's what I'll do with the rest of these. And I was mentioning I'm going to make polenta fries later. So to make polenta fries, pull out your copy of Plant Power Families. We'll look at the polenta croutons. And instead of making crouton shapes, just cut them in fry shapes. So I, I get this organic polenta from Trader Joe's. Guys, this is so cheap at Trader Joe's. This is $1.99. And here these are about $4. Um, I've seen them for $5. Nuts, crazy, crazy, crazy. So all I do to make the fries is I cut it in half, boom, get it on the cutting board on a flat edge like that, then slice it down one way and then make fries. It's easy. And then on a parchment paper baking sheet, some salt, just look at the polenta fries or polenta croutons recipe in Plant Power Family. Um, my Plant Power Family's cookbook for a guide just a guide to do the recipe and to season them and just make them fry shape. So fun. I make these and the kids are literally like grabbing them off the pan. My husband too. I also love them, but I just won't eat them tonight. And I usually use like two tubes. If it's all of us eating, I'll do three tubes because my kids are savages. <laughs> my husband too. Savages. So Often I'll make three tubes, but tonight, and I'm not having any, I'll just do two. I'm gonna flip that burger. Oh, it looks so good. It looks really good and it smells nice. And see how easy it is? You don't have to saute onion. You don't have to cut onion. Thank you, thank you. Don't even have to cut garlic. And you can then try them and then 
change up the seasonings. Then maybe you want to add, like I put dried rosemary in there. Oh, I should have put my oregano in there. I still can. I had so much oregano growing in the garden. I gave a bunch away on, on the street, just like put it out there, free oregano. So you could put some fresh herbs in there. And I think I'll do that after, add some fresh oregano. Um, you could add in um, minced um, or dried, like dehydrated garlic or garlic powder. You could add in, um, I used cumin seed. You could use dill seed, fennel seed. Um, you could use dried basil. Like you can just kind of play up with the seasonings. Once you have like the basic foundation of the burger and of course, when you try them and taste them and maybe you want some heat. So maybe you add some hot sauce or, you know, crushed pepper flakes, right? All right, gonna get this thing off to show you. It looks fabulous. Whoop, almost lost it. All right, guys, look at this guy. <laughs> and I did lose it. All right, let's try this again. At least I didn't drop it on the floor. The dog would have been running. Um, look at that. Doesn't that look like a yummy and simple? You saw how simple it was. That was easy. You get your batch cooking done, and this is easy. And look how beautiful that is. Mm, it smells good. It smells delicious. Look at that. Now, serving them, you could put them on a burger bun, you know, just as is, lots of fixings. You could also serve them in like a tortilla, cut a tortilla in half and use like a whole grain tortilla instead of a bun. Um, my family often likes that. I like them straight up with some, you know, toppings, some avocado. You could put a slather of nut cheese on there, ketchup, etc. You can also, oh dear, we don't want that in there. I think one of my hair just went over that side of the spatula. Gone, gone, gone. And you could also put them on a Buddha bowl. You could make them into little meatballs, have them with pasta or little meatballs to serve on a big salad. Um, you can crumble up leftovers, put them in a wrap for lunch, like use them in a sandwich. It can be used like for other things than just having them as a straight burger on a burger bun, right? All right, we are at, whoa, 22 minutes. I did my best. I always remember my, my brownie promise. I did brownies and girl guides. And for some reason, that little motto sticks in my head all the time. I promise to do my best, do my duty to God, the queen and the country. <laughs> did anyone else do girl guides and brownies? So I did my best, did my duty to God, the queen and the country and to the vegan world, hopefully. So enjoy the burgers, make them, make them. They are on page 143. And as I mentioned, the book is at a really good price right now on Amazon, like $16. That's a really good price. So the link is there so you can pop over and I will do a giveaway. So after this video, and if you're watching on YouTube, um, comment on the video after, not the live stream that we're in now, but the after, you know, when the video is done, comment below there and tell me anything really, but tell me, have you made the burgers? Are you going to try the burgers or what your favorite burger recipe is? Okay. Vegan burger, of course, vegan. I didn't read out the ingredients. So I'm going to do that for you now. Inhale, exhale. Okay. So it makes about 10 patties, serves about four to five, unless you have savages like me, it might serve three. I'm kidding. It serves my family. Okay, so we have one cup of chopped red bell pepper. That could be yellow bell pepper, totally, or, or orange. Green is a different flavor, so I wouldn't go green, but you could do any color. Half cup of sun-dried tomatoes, not packed in oil. You saw me soak them, drain off. Oh, I forgot garlic, a clove of garlic. Hey, that's okay. There's lots of flavor in there. I might just sprinkle in some garlic powder after three to four tablespoons of nooch, nutritional yeast, three to four tablespoons of dried onion flakes, a cup of pumpkin seeds, and then optional, you can use another quarter cup of crushed pumpkin seeds to just coat. So before you fry them, just kind of dip them in the crushed pumpkin seeds and fry them. And that's what you see in the picture, why it looks like a little bit crispy coaty there. That's a really nice like finished touch if you want to add it. Two teaspoons of smoked paprika, not regular, go for smoked. One teaspoon of dried rosemary. And then again, you could try like basil or something, but I love rosemary. 
half teaspoon of cumin seed or dill seed, or you could use both, a little bit of salt, just a pinch, some black pepper, two tablespoons of mild miso, one tablespoon of tahini, one and a half teaspoons of Dijon, I can now use it, what would? One and a half teaspoons of red wine vinegar, one cup of frozen corn kernels, or butternut squash fries, pretending to be corn, two cups of sticky short grain brown rice, or any you know, cooked leftover rice really is okay. It's just, it's nice when it's got a sticky texture and a half cup of rolled oats. Boom, done. All ingredients we have on hand, right? The only thing you might not have is maybe miso, but if you work with my recipes, you see I do use miso quite a bit, either chickpea or soy, because it's a great flavor enhancer, right? It adds a lot of um, umami and that salty flavor, and it's full of probiotics. It's just really good. So that's it. Now we're at 25 minutes and I'm done. Okay, guys, enjoy the recipe. Comment after. Are you going to try the burgers? Have you made them? Watch your favorite vegan burger recipe and you'll be in the draw for Adrena's Kind Kitchen for next week. And I didn't draw last week's winner, which would have been Sunday, but I will. Okay, so comment below and get in the draw or pop over and get yourself a book on Amazon. Okay, that's it for me. I got to clean up. Anyone want to do that for me? Okay, no takers. See you guys. Have a beauty day.